Hi everyone, else. thanks for joining us. Do you want to just start off and tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you grew up and what your childhood was like? Yes, and um, thanks for having me on your, on your podcast. Um, yeah, I grew up in Reykjavik, Iceland. And yeah, I guess the way it started, I had, um, I was, I had two best friends that were from uh, theater and writing uh, families of that. And I benefited a lot from them um, just from a five-year-old age. So to those who are worried, this is going to be the long version. I'll try to cut it short <laughs> in that one. But um, but it was mainly through one of those best friends that I got into film. You know, his sister, older sister, was like constantly writing. And we would like be, you know, 20, 10 or 12-year-olds just, you know, acting on all these short films. And I sort of just got the bug for creating short films and films from, from them. And then I got my own camera around uh, 12 or 13 year old. And I just started like inviting, you know, friends from the neighborhood over for, you know, improv improvisation short films. And it's like also, I've said it a couple of times when I've been asked, like it was also like a, a point where there were a lot of things happening at my home. At the same time, my parents were separating. So it would also be some sort of like a method of mine to, you know, create these films that at that time were more comedic, but always like kind of evolving around family and, you know, uh, conflicts and that kind of stuff. Um, and then I was just like super inspired by the music video directors and whatever was happening at the time um, with like Spike Jones and Sofia Coppola and Mark Romanek and Jonathan Glaser and those people um, who really like, um, um, and Lance Accord as a cinematographer, like uh, like all those kind of things were like very influential for me. Um, and so I think there was a point where I just wanted to, you know, st study more like kind of like the cinematography of things and this sort of like improvised kind of feeling to films. And then um, I just started making more, you know, serious short films. They stopped being comedic and became a little bit more <laughs> dramatic and... Uh, it was also because I was like acting as a uh, as a as a teenager in my school. I was always doing um, the comedy roles, um, so I really had to like balance myself out as a serious filmmaker to create this very serious short films um, that came successful at the time. And then I got a job at the at the main production company in Iceland, um, who was like servicing international projects, commercial projects, and and so on. And I started as a PA, and then eventually, very quickly. And became like a line producer to assistant directing on um, both international and domestic projects. And on the side, I was always like directing music videos, snatching filaments and and shooting 16 and 35 millimeter for like local artists. And I kind of just knew very early on that this is what I wanted to do um, and has have always been kind of like ambitious about what I'm doing. Um, so I, uh, I got like hired as a as a as a, or signed as a director and uh, for a lo another local production company in Iceland, and then it just you know took patience and time to get the the, the project rolling. And I think um, yeah, I mean okay, but the, I think like from there, I, I did a lot of commercial projects, and then I moved to Sweden, and then I did some more, and then there were more international projects uh, for international clients uh, in different markets and. That's kind of where I ramp up the later part of this, <laughs> but happy to dive in more into other stuff there. So you mentioned like music video, short form stuff, Spike Jones, those kind of people. Were you watching any, what about when you were younger? Like, did you see any like feature films that kind of inspired you? Yeah, there was a film that was uh, on TV that I was like, it was constantly being repeated. It's called Lai La Hain. Uh, it's a French film, black and white film. And I remember like, like I was quite young when I was seeing it. And I just remember like how the cinematography and the whole approach was very like uh, uh, resonated a lot with me and what, I, what I'm interested in. And and I haven't seen that film for a while now, but I, I, from what I remember and what I see, I think it, there's still moments there that I can uh, think that I'm still returning back to. And then I do remember when like, um, I saw Lost in Translation for the first time. Uh, it had a huge impact on me. It's just like the whole pacing of the film, um, the acting and the cinematography, and sort of like that unsaid and and this kind of complicated uh, dynamics between people and strangers and then family. 
uh, it still resonates very deeply with me uh, today. You got into like the production company and, and things were being, I guess, a little bit more serious in terms of um, it's, it's a profession now, like you're getting paid to do these projects. What kind of things were you like watching and looking for? Because I guess you were trying to develop your own style and, and lead into a direction that you would want to go. Like what were you trying to achieve that early through those early years? Yeah, I think when I was doing music videos, that was more kind of experimental. But when I was starting out and doing commercial work, I was really just trying to do to showcase them that I can uh, I can do what is needed, you know, like building it up, making it quite big and doing this big frames and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was really focusing towards towards that at the beginning, you know, in the beginning of of getting this uh, to being um, just to, to have these jobs confirmed. But um, but then I had a point where it was kind of like a turning point to me, which was um, when I when I uh, I kind of just stripped everything and did a short film that were, was only about like one lens, uh, no lights, and it was very inspired by the Danish Dogma films, uh, and it created this. Um, for me, it was like really uh revolutioning for me in terms of how i worked and just how i did things and also just the footage looked amazing and and the whole thing was just great so it's kind of like from there i uh, i found sort of my own voice also in terms of like how i do commercial work and how i you know do things um i try to keep it at heart very intimate and very um uh, you know close to the actors or the the, the sort of like the story and uh, the character arc. Um, and I, I remember like that's sort of like the essence of what I want to do. And that's sort of what I'm hired for today as well. So it started grand and I would say it's still in that scale, but it's like, I'm still, but I'm, I'm more, um, I'm focusing on, you know, what's important, intimacy and people and moments, whether like they're bright or, you know, not bright it just depends on what the project is yeah because uh, like some of your commercials it looks like it's it's very about yeah the people like the and the, and the environment and kind of like the emotions rather than like the product like you want to try and make it like about the human experience i guess yeah totally i mean <laughs> It's just like there's some feelings that you're just trying to capture or sometimes relive or use, you know, whatever is in your kind of arsenal of um, of uh, emotions and feelings and, and you know, and also from other people's emotional feelings. And and that really resonates with me. And that's why I kind of like lean a little bit towards that. But I, I mean, that being said, you know, I, like I still like I'm still looking for these beautiful frames and looking for this kind of like uh, but I do think that they start where the emotion is right and the tone is right. That's how you kind of do it. Was there any like um, Icelandic directors or Icelandic films like that were kind of influential to you? Um, I, I like I, I just like studied you know all of the the people that were before me from Iceland, but it's like really difficult to break from you know the island to international um, projects. So, but so I would like look to those who had done it, and they were kind of different from. Um, who, who I am or what I, I like to do, but they still like, I still admire their work. You know, I think they're, um, there were a director duo, Icelandic one called Artne and Kinski who are still active and they were making these amazing Siguros uh, videos um, who, and they were like living in the States and doing amazing, but these videos were really inspirational for me in the beginning, at least. Um, but then, no, I think, not and and also with the features i didn't really there's not really been like i, th I think highly all, all, all of all of them but there's not th there's been like a filmmaker that i found you know really speaks deeply to me uh, uh at least in the beginning um but i, I um but i i admired also a lot of the what's what, what has been going on like in scandinavia and the nordic countries and where i used to live and that's sort of where i uh, was able to further develop myself and 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 as a director. And did you watch any like uh, early on like Terence Malick like 
Tree of Life, like some of the commercials kind of have that vibe of like the, the Terrence Malick sort of look? Oh, no, I mean, I'm no, I, like that kind of came after. Uh, it's not really like I, uh, I really like it when people say these things, but I'm, I'm not a student of his films. It, you know, I do appreciate what he has done and, and, uh, and I've seen, of course, like Tree of Life, which is an amazing, but I really haven't like, uh, studied him but i think uh his approach is very much um uh it's very much like how i'd like to see more films also uh being done so but I, you know it's cool yeah it's because it's interesting to see like how people develop their style or they they decide to go in a certain direction and i think it's there's probably something to do with like you know, growing up in different countries and like the way that you know you spent your childhood or like the relationships and, and what you like decide to focus on and, and lead that story. Like when you're going for a job, like do you create like a treatment or like a pitch or do you go off like their brief? Like what's that kind of process like when when you're going to, to pitch for a job? I would say like there are two ways, but the most rewarding, like so one of them is just like you get a script and you try to like adapt and put your kind of, like you put your heart into, you know, how you see it in your style and so on. But the the other part is when you're able to develop more with the agency, where you kind of like meet them sort of uh, at, on a, sort of like an equal level, you know, where they might have some sort of like an idea or where they want to go, and they you know know you know what where where you're coming from. And uh, because I'm very collaborative, I'm kind of like looking and and wanting to make the film as best as possible, you know. And I think those kind of approaches have been so rewarding when when that happens when you're like you're you're, you're kind of meeting them and helping them out and then developing these kind of stories and 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 the film so yeah but um but yeah i guess like what you just coming back to what you're saying like yeah you're like just very like influenced i guess by you know your surrounding and 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 what's happening around you and i think um it's also just about like finding a tone and finding like what what is um you know you want to do a story that's like a three art thing but you're also just looking for like a, a feeling and a tone and so on so on. yeah the commercials they're always kind of like one one maybe two minutes so you, you know you try to you probably film a lot more than that time and then you kind of have to squeeze everything into the the one or two minutes so uh, you're kind of looking for those little moments that like you can kind of slice in yeah 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 because i'm like um i'm sometimes i feel like i'm just like collecting you know once you have everything set you you know you worked with your actors you've talked gone through like the backstory you, you build this kind of like a wall where like you know you know where you're going from a to b but you're kind of open for unexpected or unscripted things within that kind of wall so you're constantly searching, at least I am, and like looking for, you know, more true, like more something that feels organic and of life. And and yeah, I I, I can end up with so much material. So like, I, but I very, I go through all of it and I make like selects and super selects and super super selects. And it's just like it takes forever to go through the material and it's so painful sometimes also. Uh, but I don't touch edit until I've done all that kind of like a super, super <laughs> selects. And then once I place it down on like a timeline, it's usually, you know, the best what is there and and, and is the structure and and the, the, the editing part is not that doesn't take that long for it. But but yeah, I think uh yeah, this this is a process. Uh, but sometimes like sometimes like um in especially commercial productions. You don't really get that much time in editing, you know, uh, for this. So you're like rushing to get a, an edit or like something to show the agency where, you know, because you're so stressed with uh, time um, that, yeah, it can sometimes be a bit tricky. Do you do the editing yourself or do you have an editor? It's a mix, you know, I usually have an editor, but I also like would like we would like edit on two computers and you know I, I would be doing you know version on this side and they're working on that side and sort of like mixing it together and finding different moments but uh, I usually have like an editor um, for projects and then in terms of like um, coming up with a story and like explaining to the agency or like the whole um, back and forth like what kind of 
like how do you explain it you kind of come up with different characters and like what's happening and and then try to build the world around it and then like obviously it's got to be whittled down into that one minute time frame like how do you kind of um, convince them about a certain storyline that you want to go for yeah i think usually they have some sort of like a blueprint of where they're going with the story i mean there's some there's always like product you have to highlight or you know or certain um a certain like turn of events that you want to show or something like that so they usually have like that kind of blueprint when you get it and uh, same with like casting but you're right your role as a director is either like seeing where there might be a problem or you know or pitching you know maybe like an alternative version to it or just kind of making whatever they've written you know better um and and putting your kind of like personal touch on it so um so I think like also as far as like when you're pitching you you just gotta go with your gut you know and sometimes you're like swinging like quite what do you say like swinging quite uh like far or you know you're like let's hope they like this uh and that can also be a little bit scary sometimes but you know if the feeling is right then you just gotta stick to it and just hope uh they like it and 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 usually they they do and they appreciate when you like put a lot of effort and put a lot of like heart into what you want to you know portray and get out there so you it, it's kind of like the only thing you got to do and then it works or it doesn't work you know for them or it doesn't match what they want to uh, what they're trying to achieve and you gotta at least for as a director you always gotta think also that you know they've been working on the script maybe for a year or more you know and they've like they've tried many different things with the script and then you come in and you have like a week or two to you know adjust it and make your version of it and and uh so yeah i think like that's kind of that's sort of where you have to you, you sometimes also have to try to read them <laughs> what it is uh just to understand it a little bit better and try to ask as many questions as possible about um what they're thinking about and then in terms of like choosing your team like do you work with a lot of the same people or like how do you like choose somebody like a director of photography to work with yeah you usually try to work with like the same team and usually you know with uh, you know you, you're you you have a dp who travel with, travels with you and you know if, and and if, if they're not available you're just looking at some reels for new um new talent or new director of dops to work with uh and then you mostly most most often you're working with a local that like talent in you know costumes or or art department depending kind of the job of course but mostly that's kind of like the case and then you're just like looking at cvs and getting recommendations from other directors or producers you might know and uh, or dops and yeah but i think so i think mostly when you're starting a job it's very exciting to know who is going to be the dp on the job and uh and that can be tricky because schedules are challenging i think with many dps so yeah so what would be like the initial like meeting once you've kind of found a dp you've had those recommendations you've looked at their reel like what would be the initial meeting like what kind of questions do you ask like what do you talk about and how do you like find out that this is the right person for the project <laughs> that's a great question because the way it is now it's like the DPs are very sought after and very popular, and you know you don't if if you if you're if if a person you haven't worked with before in the DP role, uh, uh, well, if if the, if the person you have worked with before is not available and you have to find like a new DP, you are most likely not going to be able to interview that person before the job is confirmed. So, he might have like the same colleagues, so he might ask them how like do you think this 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 would work or not. And often, like producers, I work with with this person, and they can give you a little bit of an insight. But mostly, just going with like, what what is the level of the work? You know, what is the quality? And then, then it's just fingers crossed when that person shows up. And uh, and and I have never had a bad experience with <laughs> hiring a DP because man, like they have like such a great job. They're traveling all over, and they are like, you know, they're working with different productions and and you get to learn so much from every person um 
and and with the DOP, it's kind of like your closest creative collaborator once you enter production. And it's such a, um, you know, it can be such a wonderful, um, you know, conversations and, and experience to have. So what would the initial conversation be with the DP? Like, do you show them like references of what you're going for? Or do you talk about like the feeling or like, do you get technical with like lenses and cameras and stuff? Or like, how do you like just talk about like what you want to achieve with the image? I think you, I mean, there's always the treatment where you've kind of laid out a little bit your idea of, of uh, the visual aesthetics and the approach you want to go. Sometimes you even talk about lenses, depending on what you're thinking about. And then it's a mix of like that and sort of like what you've done in the past. And and if you want to try something new, you kind of, of course, need to express that to the, the DOP. And then, and then, um, and then you kind of try to get a feel for their insights and what they think and what they think would be nice for the project. And most often, like they have, you know, fantastic ideas or approach, you know, to it. So uh, you kind of just like try to lean into it, and also you want to create an environment where it's like collaborative, and you wanna uh, you wanna you know get the most out of the DP, and you also wanna get the most out of the project to make it as great as, as you think it could be. So you're just trying to like have that conversation and maybe sometimes they'll suggest using some lenses or equipment or something that you hadn't thought about, you know? So, yeah, but I would say it's kind of just, just pull up on a, I just, I would say like, because I, I know this from just other DPs that, but it, for them, it can also be quite challenging, you know, because they don't decide on locations and, and so on, you know, they, they show up in the tech recce and, and, and sometimes it's so set in stone that they can't really change it. And that can also be quite challenging for them to work within. Yeah. Cause I know like the DPs want to shoot it at a certain time of day or the sun is in the right spot. So if everything's already decided, it's kind of a bit hard to change things, but they make it work. Um, so when you're on set, uh, how do you like to work? Like, do you have like a director's monitor or do you have like a big monitor that you stand by or do you stand next to the camera or you like, whereabouts are you like when, when you're on set? I try to be as close to the action as possible. So I, you know, whether it's a handheld monitor or a larger monitor, I'm just like, I want to be close to the actors and, 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 uh, uh, and I want to be, and I, uh, because of my style and like rolling, I'm, I'm, I might talk to the actors during filming or I might talk, you know, to DP or I might like record when people don't know like i mean I, I've, I've told the ad and the crew sort of about that beforehand but sometimes i just like to start you know when there's like a moment off moment that's happening with the actors and so on i like i'd like to start filming uh um and i made everyone like sort of aware that i might do this i think um um also the actors so yeah and sometimes if I have a if I have a good relationship with uh, the DOP and they're okay with it, you know, I, I might operate the camera for, you know, a certain time and, and so on. So, yeah. Do you, because sometimes, you know, there's not going to be any dialogue, like, are you kind of like directing while they're like looking at into the distance or something? Like, do you say certain words or to try and like get an emotion out of them? So I work very closely, whether it's an actor or non-actor, we always have like quite, you know, good conversations and even it starts even in the audition you know where i ask them some questions and, and just trying to understand where they're coming from and what their personality is like so so when we go acting they kind of understand when we go shooting they kind of understand you know how i approach things and i tell them before that I, I do like to talk um and i do like to share something and even maybe before a shoot we might you know do some sort of like a an exercise or rehearsal or sort of like depending on what the technique they like uh, of um, where where we're kind of basing this character or this person and, and so on. Um, but I do record sound for everything, and I do leave you know room for them to speak or talk. But I find find it especially with the short content that that uh, less is more, and you know you, you don't have to explain your emotions. You can you can also share it you know through an expression or or even a non-expression, you know, just uh, I kind of I kind of always know how to get uh, go with it. I think. Yeah, and 
Do you want to just talk a little bit about the casting process? Because it seems like the cast is like a very important role in, in your films. So like if there's a couple, like do you cast them together? Do you make sure that they're like getting on or like do you cast any like real people or are they all actors like the mother and like daughter or mother and son type relationships? Are they related or you kind of casting actors and like how do you make sure that they're all going to work on the day uh yeah it's some sort of like an insight of course and also but it's um and you and the way it usually is is just like you get tapes or you can see images of people and then you meet them and then you have this kind of conversation and you i i very quickly know whether this person is gonna i'm gonna be able to work with this person or not but i usually uh but i'm Having done this, I'm quite confident with people and 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 personalities, and I kind of and I I've had many different types of experience with people who even you know uh, who 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 have had to just work a lot, especially with kids, towards like getting you know the right mood and the right method uh, from them. Um, so casting for me is less about rehearsing and, and it's more about conversations and. You know, yeah, we might do something that's kind of like, um, kind of just like, you know, feeling in a moment or something like that. But but I I uh, I, I just try to get to know people in some ways, you know. And then and then when you have couples, um, it, it takes a lot more work. Uh, and you, but but it comes from an understanding of where you want to go with the film. And you also, I work with people in terms of like figuring out like a backstories if, if there's time for it. And then I also work with, you know, people if they, and this depends on people if they like to share their experience or not. And then we can sort of, you know, use that and and figure out a new approach to it or and so on. So yeah, it's quite layered in some ways, I think. And then in terms of like equipment, like do you have like a, a go-to kind of set of equipment that you want to use or do you try to experiment with different things here and there like i'm sure like shooting cars do you do like the the um the camera car with the arm like the ukraine or like do you use dollies or steady cam or handheld like what kind of like style do you like to go for yeah i have um like i, I try to keep things simple but i, I I, I really do appreciate more kind of like the older glass, you know, that's fast uh, for lenses and and I lean quite a lot sometimes towards that. I, I don't have that same feeling when I see something that's kind of like a newer, crispier lens, which is often more, more often the choice for um, the cars and automotive. Um, and, uh, but, um, and then I also have this, I don't know how many times I've started a production wanting to do steady cam and wanting to do only dollies or crane. And I'm like, after one shot, I'm straight to handheld and I'm just like uh, filming it more intimate, you know, in and out of focus. And, and it's just like resonates very, again, very <laughs> deeply with me, <laughs> that approach. Um, and I just feel like when I do steady cam for that, uh, it becomes so many conversations with, you know, doing the right, with steady cam, it's like feels so much about the timing and getting you know and then you turn this and blah 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 and you know it has to be like that and where whereas when it's handled it's more organic and you just are in the moment and you find it um um but i have recently now been limiting myself to trying to tripod and just seeing how that <laughs> goes <laughs> and just to keep it like you know to, to force yourself to something else um and then with the with a car in Ukraine, it's it's quite um, there. It's it's so much. Uh, it's about like finding the right locations and doing the right angles to the car and doing it justice, so you get this kind of beautiful shots of the car. And of course, like you mentioned, time of the day and and so on. So that is a little bit more um, executional. You know where you you know it's a metal so you're not really gonna you know grasp emotions that will come more sort of like in the editing and the music and the sound design which is very important for automotive um but um so yeah i think 
yeah and and, and you're kind of limited also to tours you know whether it's a whether it's a an helicopter or you know or drone or the ukraine and so on so it's kind of just or from the back of a van <laughs> and then in terms of like uh like time frames how long do you get to kind of like work on some of these projects so like you'll get a call from your production company or agent and they'll tell you if they've got a project they send you a, like a brief and then do you work on like a treatment first or do you have like initial conversation or how does that work yeah you have like you get this uh most often it's an email where you got uh, we're saying like they would like you to pitch on a project and you have a conversation with them and you get an understanding of where they want to go with the project and what they're thinking what might be the uh, obstacles on the way what needs to be addressed and and so on and from there you just make your treatment and that's where you just you know follow your gut you know if you want to do something drastically you 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 gotta make sure also that you have like the reasons why and and so on um or you just trying to adjust or make it a little bit better or you know layering it and so on and then you present your treatment or your pits and there's some cost and so on that goes on between the production and uh, the agency or and um and then once you are awarded um that's when you um uh, that's when you kind of start shaping it and 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 getting into it and the timeline can be very different um, you can have, you know, one or two weeks of pitching. You can do longer if it's, you know, especially if, if the agency is resonating a little bit what you're doing and they might have another competitor also that is also hitting it in some ways, then they, they, they might drag a little bit longer. And then the turnaround could be, you know, two to three weeks up to, you know, uh, up to, you know, 10 months or so, which I've also been on a project that long. Um, for commercial work so it's it, it can drag quite long um, but usually it's much quicker from a month to maximum two months until you like finally said all good let's go and then how long do you get to like shoot and then edit before they need to like a finished product it is quite fast i'd say sometimes we're looking at like five days of editing or so on uh up to 10 days up to like a month depending on how long long the project is before like a medium-sized project is like five six seven days ish or something like that and you always would like to have a lot more to edit um but it's just because like there's a schedule there's a delivery there is some sort of like a screening and so on so you're you really gotta just work all hours to get it done and is there much like back and forth like you'll do an edit and you think it's good and then the agency will say they want to change something or yeah i think i mean for the u.s market you like there there are projects where you and most of them like you are there are projects where you just hand off the material and the agency kind of just takes over canada as well but with the german thing and the european markets you are involved in the edit and you of course just do your version and and you stand by it and you and you convince them or you know hopefully it's a it's a it's a home run or something like that but most often not and uh and then there are notes and, and things they want to get in or maybe like something that um product wise or something like that that they feel like could be emphasized a little bit better and and you just sort of have to work your way towards it i mean uh you yeah i mean usually just you film what you're happy with and you you hope hope to like it and but there, of course when you're editing you're creating like a rhythm and you're creating this kind of like a um yeah like a sort of like a, a rhythm and if something comes in you might have to adapt somewhere else in it and so on so it's kind of it, it's such a so it's, it's just a lot of conversations and, and collaboration of you know making the best possible you i mean you kind of you also like want, want, want them to look good you know the agency and, and the client and you want them to you know feel part of it and, and want to also uh, be proud of the the, the end results uh, yeah i know like the the american market like the agency will just take the footage and edit whatever they want that's why you see a lot of like directors cuts because they want to do their own version where it's like the the color or the certain shots or make it longer um 
So how do, do you ever do any like director's cuts as well, like after it's finished? Yeah, but less like recently, but yeah, definitely. I mean, there have been moments where you might have, especially in the beginning for the US jobs, like you might have filmed it with a different uh, approach. Like you might have filmed it and like been thinking about some other music or a tone or something. And once you see the edit, it's just like an, like a completely another com commercial in that sense. So that was that's that has been, those moments have been a little bit heartbreaking <laughs> when you see that. Uh, but then, but then you just like do your own versions of it. Um, but uh, but like the best thing possible like is when your cut is the official cut and like and that's the music and you know you can just sense the room that everyone is just like really pumped about this and then then you know this is going to be something amazing um and i really like strive to do that and try to get that in that room so that's why i'm like constantly trying to you know work with them and seeing we can um do get it that way and and yeah it's all about just communication what's your approach in terms of like you want something your way but you're having like a little bit of a conflict or a disagreement like do you ever get upset and like you kind of you know probably through experience that like doing something one way probably won't get you what you want like how do you kind of approach it in a way that you know it's not gonna like cause any tension or it's not gonna ruin the project like because you know there's gonna be another project down the line so you don't want to like explode and make it a big deal but you still have to like push and push like how far can you push until you know like okay that's enough I rarely think about like if there's another project on the road and like for that, but I'm more just kind of servicing the project as as much, most as possible, and um, and you know the way I like pitched on it and missioned it and we're aligned with it. That's kind of like that's sort of where where we're going with the, the project. And then sometimes, of course, something comes up later down that is you know maybe not as you thought about it in the in the in the treatment phase. And then I don't know. I'm 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 usually just. I mean, I'm. I don't know. I'm just like a huge believer in the communicating and talking to people and trying to understand where they're coming from next, and also uh, where I'm coming from, and you know how this fits to the project and how we can make this uh, the best film and what what serves it the best. Um. So I mean I've had a lot of conflicts, of course. I mean any director has that, and an agency and clients also does it. But you just sort of gotta sometimes like plow through and and just make it work, uh, what whatever it takes. And um, but I rarely film something that I don't like or I'm not proud of or something. You know I, I, that's. Um, but of course it can happen and. And it's it's worse when you see that also happen, like ending up in in the edit. But I don't know. I I mean, I, it's just there's some patience part of it uh, and the longevity of this. Uh, I mean, and you are constantly just building up this uh, this uh, house of cards and just hoping you know one card doesn't get taken out and the whole thing collapses and uh, and yeah. But yeah, I, I mean there each product is very unique so there's no really like one solution to it other than just like being open and being you know honest and uh and saying the th things as they are and you know one thing is also that you are like hired because of your sensibilities and your aesthetics and you know it and and if your sensibilities and your aesthetics say that this would be different then you gotta voice that that's your job you know and that's why they hire you right and so you you want to communicate with them and talk about like the the problems or the issues that arise and but what happens if they say oh the client's not happy with it are you allowed you can't really talk to the client or like you kind of have to funnel through the agency and like they'll use an excuse like somebody else's decision but you can't get to that person who's making the decision so you have to try and communicate in terms of like what they want yeah i mean usually like at least like the marketing director is in the room when there's like some you know big decisions or something that kind of changes everything so you i am usually able to at least communicate uh my thoughts um 
but I'm trying to think about when, when there was like something I just completely couldn't decide on and um, and those situations are not um, you know they are, can be quite tricky and difficult you know when there when there's uh, somewhere up there but I, I just don't remember where it was like complete but there has definitely been that but I just like I'm, I must have this must come back to me when I'm very old and then I'll be like that one but now i'm just not really there <laughs> to think about those i just look at the work and i'm very proud of it i'm very proud of like what i have now and you know i feel like i've been honest the whole way so it doesn't really like i've always given my best at each project so i don't really don't really remember those where it did, didn't go my way but uh maybe if we dive into some i might remember something <laughs> Do you want to just talk a little bit about some of the projects that you've done? I'm just looking on your website. Like the first one is the Land Rover Solitude. Is that Solitude? The, that's the one. So um, what was that project like? It's like a couple film. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's a project that's quite dear to me. It's the first project I shot in the US uh, and, you know, for this brand and and it was kind of like a it was while i was uh, with that caviar and it was like a it was an age of digital where everything uh, nobody really knew what was happening and it might be going somewhere or not and new websites and blah 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 so it was kind of like a project that was like under the radar i guess for the for the client so it was just you know um and even the production in some ways like it was just like we got to do this this project you can sort of decide where you can go and i had been studying so much utah uh, that i uh, and and uh and uh, native americans and mormons and all like i don't know i was just like historying myself uh, too much over there so i just like we're going to utah and then um we had to find the states close by and that was idaho so let's go to idaho afterwards <laughs> and the film you see in i did two films and the one that's on the website was the one in idaho and coming from that kind of short film a few years ago where it's just like one lens and no light uh and working now with uh with uh, a belgian cinematographer dimitri karakistanis um it was just uh and then working with the actors and the backstory and you know it was just a beautiful journey um to do and very insp inspiring and just filming and filming and we we were so honest and so knowing the tone of what we want to do with these couples it was very personal from like a personal experience about this you know this everything that's unsaid and and so on and and that film was like shot for only like two days where the, the other one in utah was also two days um but yeah i think uh, and and that film kind of generated also a lot of work afterwards and and kind of like really sets um you know kind of really established the way i do films you know this film so that's why it's really up there still and so were they like a real couple or did you cast them and find out like if they're gonna work yeah yeah i just cast we casted them and they and they just had a lot of conversations and they really understood it where you know what i wanted to do with this and where i was going and they they just got it and um and then they yeah i don't know there's this something this is something about like um uh, like a tone and a feeling that you're kind of revisiting and just sharing and it's something i have a uh, i've kind of like an easy time to access although you sort of just have to you know work with the actors and non-actors to get this feeling through and then in terms of like the music were you able to choose the track that you wanted or did you get something made for it yeah that was a uh shot in dark again it was a composer i've been listening to like for many years and then i um i did the first edit with this track and then asked them to reach out to him and he was he was happy with it <laughs> so like the, it was just like it was kind of like a cheat you know that, that happened and uh yeah and then there's like uh some kind of like little film like super eight kind of cut in and then there's like super slow motion like did you have a phantom camera and different like cameras throughout yeah for that one i had like a i had like a bolus camera and then a phantom um it was the phantom miro not the phantom flex it was like the small one and uh and the ac peregrine which was 
he kind of figured out how to use Phantom Miro. There was no Phantom technician or anything like that. So we were, we were very small. And for me, this was like also quite an eye opener just to use this kind of technology for it. Uh, yeah, so mixing it. What kind of main camera did you use? And did you did you use just one lens as well? Like you said, the same style. I th we we had I think it was just like an Alexa and with high speed lenses. I don't think we mixed lenses that much. It, but I don't know. I think it was probably like a thirty five and a twenty four millimeter lenses. You know, not not switching it more than that. I think. Yeah. So then once you finished that commercial, like. It was fairly easy, like everyone was happy with it, like the agency and everything. There wasn't much back and forth. Yeah, it was kind of rare that like the agency, um, like we had a like a post, like, like, is it like a postpartum call, like a call afterwards, just uh, where we were just like thinking for the project and how wonderful the experience was and, and, and that kind of stuff. And it was just uh, really nice. And we enjoyed it quite a lot. It was it was a great experience, and you that was also fantastic. <laughs> so I guess yeah, like the the location is like a character in itself. So choosing the right people, like the casting, but also choosing the right location and and the team and everything will come together. Yeah, absolutely. And like for that type of project, it was it's it was it was quite fast the way everything worked, you know. So I was able to. I'm trying to remember, like, I, 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 we didn't have a time to like do a tech recce or anything like that. We just dived into it. And and I think I was able to location scout like the day before, or two days before, or something like that. It was very fast, you know. And and of course, we couldn't shoot in any like, you know, uh, national parks or anything like that. So you also had to find something that was like off the grid to get like permits in time. Um, and then, yeah, yeah. You you just have to get a little bit lucky as well, you know. But I had a really good relationship with uh, Dimitri, the DP, and and the whole crew, and and it was just like, yeah, came together really nicely. And then there's another one on your website called Volvo, Volvo Place to Share. Yeah, yeah. What was that experience like? Was that in what country was that shot in? That was shot in Sweden. Um, it was a, it was a. Big project. It was an 11 day of, of filming and it was shot all through Sweden. And being someone from Iceland, it was also quite rewarding to do a Volvo project because I had been living in Stockholm for uh, four or five years. And so, um, I mean, that was I mean that was a much bigger crew than Land Rover with all the equipment you could ask for. And uh, um, but the, the the approach and the idea was still sort of in the world of, of Land Rover in that sense, uh, but just on a much grander scale. Uh, I would say like just the whole experience was fantastic. I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, it, it had been a bucket list of mine to do a Volvo, just uh, having some, being someone moving to that country. And um, yeah, and, uh, and I really appreciate the whole experience uh, for, for that. Was that a different DP or the same one or? It was a different DP, a Swedish DP called Arid Redblad. Um, it was our first time working together. Same actually with Dimitri also on Land Rover, but uh, it was first time working together and and uh, and to to um, to to what do you say uh, contradict what I said earlier about a DP selection. I did have a conversation with him before finally confirming uh, because it was such a long project and so many days that you just really wanted to see if, if we could. Uh, if we could work together and I mean, he's he's the most uh, decent human being and um, an amazing DP and we had a really good collaboration on that project and he was all in and, and he's what's great about Ari is also he's very technical and very prepared and um, yeah and just all around great guy. Cool. And there's like a little bit of like uh, I guess tension at the start with the the lady turning around angry looking like is there some kind of fight and then they slowly come back together like is that part of the the treatment i guess the story that is like a director's cut <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, the official version was still it had those kind of like moments and and had those but it, it started off a little bit different um but i, I there was so much material shot that I, I really needed to you know exhaust the material and push it uh more so 
uh, and that's another music because we went for an, but this is uh, this is the first music that um, the composer for the official version did and the one we presented and you know i'd never heard something that was that fantastic but but um um so that's why I, like I, I really need to see where this would go and that's why it was like that but i mean for everything and it's like for, uh, you mentioned this but it's also like for you know every story you kind of know the a to b and that's you know where you want to go with it and you want to lighten it up and make it make it uh nice and and, and warm in the end so would the agency say like we don't want to show her angry like was that part of like the disagreements no i think play um the whole idea was about a place to share so it wasn't necessarily about her, her being like angry and the place to share is kind of like you can have all the spectrum of emotions so i kind of just picked up on on that sort of emotion as the beginning um of the film um but uh the core concept is more just like where she's driving she's kind of contemplating her you know her her moments with her family and and, and spouse and and so on and and uh which is also i mean i think the official one is also also a nice version it's just that this one kind of resonated more for me so yeah like i guess this one is an example of doing your own version and then having their version and it wasn't necessarily too different but it's just like in terms of um like advertising i'm wondering like what the differences would be like why would they want like a different style of music or like what's what would be the main differences yeah i think i think um i think it kind of came down to it kind of came down to the music decision um which was from the top um and for the official version and it was more a beat which uh which is of course you know what kind of i don't know would probably work better or something like that but uh but um yeah i mean sometimes it is that like that you know it was such a i mean it was such a a, a, a big project that you know it sometimes goes that way but we did the other film we did we used the same music and you know we did it the same you know uh, as per briefed and treatment so on so and then there's another um volvo um commercial on your website introducing is that in sweden as well like where was that one yeah that was part of the other project as well so we did two two commercials at, uh, at the same time and and yeah that was shot all over and and um uh, and yeah it was a very proud moment again for me to do that film you know it was uh it was such a it was such a um Kind of like a bucket list thing to do a and um and that one is more about like pace and and about like technology and sort of like power and uh and i mean i love the edit on it and it's, yeah yeah and the music is also fantastic i think and that one's like uh just a single male by himself so i guess there's different markets or versions of commercials that pitch to a, like a family man and then this guy seems like a bachelor of sorts but i guess like it's uh <laughs> demography for for that car i think and um yeah but i mean again there was there was so much material so i could have gone many different ways but yeah that was kind of like the type that uh, we were going for with this guy for at that time well oh. And then there's another one, um, Hyundai for the future, and it looks like it's in like the Middle East or somewhere. Like, what's that country? Is that a whole different market again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know what? It was for it was a German agency and uh, German production company, Marken Film, and but it was for Saudi Arabia, and it was to promote uh, women to start uh, driving, which is you know what what's yeah so it was in some ways it was political and and for me it was also trying to find some sort of like a like finding purpose in you know what we do because i feel like you know uh commercials you can there are many different ways you can be like um you know um use the medium to promote good or or showcase the things that are different or you know or how they should be and for me this was kind of like a big deal and and so 
so that's why I, I engaged on this project and uh, and had a, a good co like a good collaboration with the agency and production. We shot this in Dubai. The casting for that, like, how did you find that main actress and the family and stuff and like that? How did you find getting the whole vibe on camera? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I went through like a casting agency and there was like remote casting and what you were looking for was like a strong female lead for this, you know, particular important um, film um, at the time. So it was it was really important that the uh, the lead understood the role and, you know, to, you know, put, portray like a, a powerful uh, woman, independent, you know, woman as far as that goes within that market. And you just create this kind of energy on set where you know people feel um, comfortable and and welcoming and open. And I worked with another amazing DP, Tani Hila. I was uh, I'm such a, a fan of his work and personality, and it's become a good friend of mine um, who also understands this kind of film language. Um, yeah, I think yeah, it was just a very important thing, and you want to. You know, do cast as just as great justice as possible. Cool. And so, do you have like a, in terms of like what you enjoy doing? Like, do you find that it's it's easier to have two characters on screen playing off each other, or like how do you direct like just one person? Like, what kind of things do you talk about, or like if they're staring into the sunset or whatever, like. If they're just like blank stare, like how do you like emote some kind of emotion that you want them to portray? Yeah, I think, I mean, of course, it's very nice when you have like people acting together, but it's also like nice when they are just sort of interacting or, you know, you it's kind of like a downplayed kind of version of it. But but I, I do also like quite a lot when there's just one person and it's all about the sort of like internal state of that character or and, and, and person. And depends on what this what the scene is but i'm very interested also into like faces and you know portraits and people and sort of like you know the difference when you look down or to the right or you know how the light hits and and so i i, I sort of can go forever on these kind of portraits of people you know and but it's it depends on what the scene is and and sort of like the internal state that you're looking for within that kind of character or person uh whether person is feeling yeah like heavier heavy on the inside like like you know like the legs are feel like lead or you know or this very light like a feather or you know that kind of emotion that you put into it and sometimes it helps you know using some sort of like a, um some sort of like a sense memory ish you know depending on where you want to go you know remembering stuff or you know getting you to a place that kind of resonates you know to get the right emotion out um but um that's one thing and then also just i try to keep the set quite quiet so there's room to talk and to you know um you know the, and there's time to listen as well so that's kind of like my go-to tools to to get that kind of emotions out it says another one for Samsung where it's like a younger boy. Like, what's it like working with like children? Like, how do you get them to act as the same process as working with an adult? Um, no, not not the same as you. You don't really expect them to go deep into any sort of backstory or anything like that. Uh, you could try, but I don't know. But it, but you. I mean, again, it's conversation and communication. Uh, and you also um, you also steer a little bit in casting how receptive they are of direction um how sort of like em emotional intelligence they might have um and sometimes you don't need a lot because you kind of just allow them to be who they are and you kind of give them just subtle directions what is a complete like no no at least for me is just like to give them a beat or to say and then you look here on this point or that you know i, I, I steer away from those kind of directions for kids um I, I just try to create like an environment for them where they feel they can sort of be themselves you know if, it, if it's that type of role 
And if it's more kind of serious, then of course you need to have some sort of like a conversation where you work towards that. Um, it's just a, it's a mix of techniques with kids, music sometimes. Um, if you, you could, you know, talk to talk and play music sometimes just to see, you know, if this is something they like, but it's, um, yeah, it's just different methods and techniques and you, and you just have to read sort of into, you know, what the kid is sort of expecting, I think, uh, and keep, keep the set light and also respecting, respecting, um, their tolerance, respecting, you know, if they feel like they can't do this, you know, not to pressure them in any ways to do anything. Um, you know, what are your goals for like the future? Like, what do you want to achieve? Um, I mean, I con constantly want to like be better and own the craft more and, you know, just to, you know, um, uh, just continue to develop it this in this way. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think like I, I, ideally, ideally it's just become better and the more you do it, the more better you get and, you know, more skills you have, uh, for what I'd like to develop more is also continuing with this, uh, approach of filmmaking. Uh, which I've already started. I'm now in post-production of a short film that I filmed, um, which where I did the same technique, worked with the actors and non-actors and creating characters. And then we we filmed for three days. And it was one of like, uh, sort of like the most rewarding film experience I've had. Uh, and that style is the same new for me to be, you know, where the story is going, but I'm not really writing, you know, you say this at this stage, you know, you kind of just know, and then we just work on our impulses. And I really uh, love that kind of process and would love to continue that, you know, on a, uh, this will be a short film and hopefully, you know, I can develop this into a more longer version uh, and just working more on character driven and story driven um, stories, um, long and short, you know, that's kind of the goal now um yeah i mean there are, there are so many things i'd love to do uh, there's just like i think uh i'll probably never get tired of being curious about how to do things and and, and tell stories or or even just like or even just like uh, moments or you know or uh, sort of just like a feeling i think that i'm also curious about i think so with that short film, like what's the, the goal with it? Like, do you, are you self um, funding it and then you want to put it into film festivals or like, what do you want to release it? How do you want it to go? Yeah. Um, yeah. The film, I mean, I, I own a company uh, called Norder, who, which is also producing like short films and, and narrative uh, projects and, um, and sort of like the, the company has been uh, going through like the, sort of like the festival circle um, um most recently like one of the short films that my company did was uh and can uh film festival and uh and and, and one like a special mention at on the door so there's like a there's like a, a track you can sort of see and you know it's more tangible with uh you know doing the short film rounds and the festival rounds and the idea is um, this film will be finished end of this year and you know fingers crossed that it will go to some festivals and then there will be probably more short films and then narrative work afterwards i think so yeah so you mentioned like you want to capture these like moments like how do you find inspiration to kind of think up these moments? Like, are you doing anything in like real life where you kind of observing things or going traveling or doing like these different uh, experiences where you kind of think of something or you see a moment and you're like, oh, you write it down. You're like, oh, that would be a good thing to put, fit into like a commercial or a short film. Like, how do you come up with these different ideas? yeah it takes a long time i'm digesting for a very long time you know a certain thing and mostly these things are personal or some sort of like a feeling that i'm continuing going to which is very related to the, the things i were doing when i started out making short films 13 year olds you know it's about these sort of like family dynamic or kind of unsaid things or you know where there, it's about the internal state um so the ideas I get are very often connected to at, at core or something like that. Um, and then I 
I just digest them and then I write them and in you know this particular film that I, I did um, what meant to I've been thinking thinking about that for seven years or so and I had planned to film it in New York and I was like already started scouting and 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 casting and then the pandemic hit and I had to rethink it and so I said it now um, with my colleagues in Iceland and uh, actors there and and uh, and I shared everything I had with the actors and we then collaborated from there in creating this film together um, so yeah so I there's some magic also in that sort of development which is a little bit different from the the kind of uh, script thing but uh, but it also uh, what is necessary for that is of course like funding you know because it's not easy to fund those kind of projects so that's why it's good to have the, the production company uh, support behind that and yeah and I mean just continuing and thinking about ideas and, and seeing how we can make them happen sweet so yeah um thanks so much for talking to us today um it's been really insightful and and great to to hear your story but just as like a final thought do you have any advice for people who want to you know get into filmmaking maybe short films get into creating commercials like and and just some advice on on how they could get started or how they could continue to progress in their career yeah totally i think um I mean, a lot of it is, of course, passion and uh, and trying to, you know, muscle up as much as you can and working on different projects and just like, you know, doing, you know, working on projects and, and creating also, you know, on the side, at least that kind of worked for me. Uh, but then it's so much sadly about like patience. Uh, it's about being there and, you know, being the right person at the right time when that opportunity comes up. And when I was starting, I was thinking about these kind of, it seems like it seems like a such a self-help book. I swear I did not read the self-help book, but for me it was just like a these kind of three yeses I would wait for. You know, it wasn't enough to get like one yes for a commercial. I had to have like three in order to to have a real to be able to do something about it. And to get those kind of three yeses took you know a long time to get it. Uh, and on the side, I would just be either you know directing music videos or working and and production and just you know doing short films or just trying to do whatever was there and and trying to read into every part of the of the the market and the game sort of just to, to read into how this all works. Um, and yeah, it's it's. It's patience and it's resilience to do it and uh and it will happen you know that's the thing yeah just keep going don't give up <laughs> yeah, yeah.